guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for what you're about to do in my life and the people's lives out there. And Lord, I pray that you will just permeate this the the soil of this sermon and plant seeds in people's hearts that they will never forget. Speak to us all a different word all at the same time, God. Give us what we need. What you've given me is so simple, but so complex. And I just praise you and worship you for 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 using me in such a mighty way. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. This sermon is going to be called Bring Something. (laughs) Or Bring Something for You Proper Grammar People. Um, I was thinking of myself and how I'm an all or nothing person. Like, I either want it all or or nothing at all. Remember that old song by that boy band, Old Town? Cause I want it all. Or nothing at all. Like kind of kind of like that. And I've always been like an all or nothing person. Like I want it all right now or I don't want it at all. And the Lord was kind of dealing with me because I'm kind of working on getting this project off the ground um but the the material that i need isn't mine in fact it's um a, a celebrity's material and i can't use it like legally and ethically without their permission i'm like god God, what do I do? This thing won't let me go. I could go on to other projects, but this thing keeps niggling and niggling and niggling. And I get story ideas and movie ideas, but this one project is is niggling and niggling at me. And I was and I was kind of stressing about it. I'm like, why? Why did you give it to me and not someone who has more connections and all that stuff? Why do you show me all this when I don't have the means to get it done? Why wouldn't you show me something uh, from in the Christian communities where I have connections or whatever? And I was griping because I'm seeing this thing and I'm seeing it come to pass. I'm seeing it. um, I'm seeing it affecting people. I'm seeing it in a positive way. I'm seeing it affecting the world and changing the game in several ways. I'm seeing me breaking down doors and whatever. And, And he said, Rachel, I will do that thing and I will um, bring it to pass. And I and you will you will make every movie uh, write every novel with every author and by yourself, even secular sacred, you will do that. But while you're waiting for this thing to come to pass, 
realize that you're that you're exactly where I want you to be. And he says, uh, he said, at least Rachel, you're bringing something. It, he said, it may not be what you want, and it definitely won't be where you'll stay. But he said, be faithful in preaching your sermons now. Because that is the something I need from you right now. Um, often we are waiting for a better life and for things to get better. And not to say that we shouldn't, but he's, he told me to tell you don't wait for things to be different. Give him what you have in your hand right now because that's what he wants right now. He doesn't, he, yes, you could have your grandiose idea and yes, you could have your business idea. Yes, you could see, um, that thing coming together, nothing wrong with that. But until that thing is coming together, work with what you got. Work with what you got. And whatever you got, bring it to the Lord. Whether it may, may seem little, maybe it doesn't seem like enough. But he just wants it because he wants to see, can you obey me at this place in your life or do you need um, the play or do you need whatever to obey me? The Lord doesn't want babes. He just wants something. So Whatever that something is that you have to give, just do it, and he can use it mightily. Um, and you'll never know how he uses used it, because um, sometimes I get like um. 30 people who watch one sermon in a week and sometimes I get two people that watch it and, and one of those two are myself so I get one other person that watches it and sometimes I have to tell you I get get so like why am I doing this why am I doing this and he said, Rachel, it's not the quantity of people, it's the quality of your of your sermons and what you're giving them. He said, um, he said, just keep preaching your heart out. Don't worry about the numbers or whatever. You know what you're giving them is substance. And when I'm ready for you to come out and for the world to see who you are, who I've created you to be, the massive creative person I've created you to be, uh, the massive songwriter, storyteller, um, preacher, that I've created you to be, that that it's going to be the time. But until then, just be faithful in where I've called you. Because sometimes we are just waiting for the big, but then we forget to be faithful where we are. We're so busy, busy hustling, we don't even uh, see the people around us, we forget to be faithful where we are. 
We complain about the job we have because it's not the job we want. But the Lord is 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 wanting to see. Can you be faithful where you are right now? Can you can you show up? Can you do what needs to be done? Can you be in the trenches? Can you preach? Will you preach the same with only one person watching? Or do you need the, the um, millions of views? Or do you need um, 500 subscribers to preach? He's, he's looking to see your faithfulness and your tenacity. I've been wanting to do this one project for 20 years, for 20 years at different times, no matter how, how long I've tried to let this project go and say, okay, this is not the time. It keeps on, it keeps on uh, coming up and no matter how how many times I've kind of wanted to let go the Lord I feel the Lord saying no and I'm like I should start smaller I should do this and he said no just keep at it keep knocking don't give up and he's saying wow you're he said, while you're bringing something, keep knocking. He's like, um, don't just settle. He said, yes, bring something. Bring to me your little, and I will do something mighty with it. But at the same time, keep knocking. Don't give up on what, I, what I've shown you. But don't um don't make what I've shown you your soul focused. Remember to be kind to people. Remember to to um to be faithful where I put you. Remember to to do all that because you never know what doors will open. Because God uses people to open doors and you never know what person is going to open that door and don't kiss up to a person because you think that they can open the door for you so that's why you're being nice to them no 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 treat everyone with the kindness and respect that Jesus would because it's only the right thing to do and the seeds you sow are the seeds that will grow so sow those seeds keep working at it and one day it will be how God wants it to be and sometimes we have to settle on the fact that um uh sometimes it's going to be different than we thought and sometimes it's going to be exactly how we thought given time because um, God is so vast and he teaches the lessons we need to know when we need to know them and I think sometimes we miss the little things because we're Focus on the bigger things. But he said, bring something. And the online church that I'm a part of um, always is looking for volunteers and looking for people to volunteer. And I said, and I said, God, do you want me to volunteer? Uh, and he said, Rachel. <laughs> You already preach about two sermons per week, and you already seek me. He be, 
would be like, just because you're not volunteering for the church doesn't mean you're not doing anything for me. You're just doing things in a different way. And I said, oh, he said, he said, whatever you're doing, just do it for me and you're doing it for me. So I'm happy with you and proud of you. Um, and he'll say the same thing to you. If he's got you taking care of kids for now, do it as on to the Lord. If he's got you doing real estate, do it as on to the Lord. Whatever he's got you doing, do it as on to the Lord. I think that um, in the in a world in the world we live in, we live in the world that doesn't appreciate the small things. We don't we don't celebrate small beginnings. Uh, there's a reason why the Bible says, um, "Despise not the day of small beginnings." Because small beginnings is where you get your training. Small beginnings is where you can cut your teeth, where you can make mistakes without the world world pouncing on you. Small beginnings is where you can get your teaching and whatever. Um, but it, but we live in a world who, that celebrates the big. Uh, that if you could get the most views, then you could get paid for it. If you could get the most subscribers, subscribe to your channel on YouTube, then you can get um, money for it. Um, if you could get the most of this, then you're somebody. But what we don't understand is it starts with little and then God allows it to grow. But you have to be faithful in the little first before it can grow. Whatever it is, whether it be a business or a ministry, whatever it is, you need to be faithful in the middle before God can give you much. Because um, he'll often say, can I trust you with this? You don't give a two-year-old a car before you give them a toy truck. Why? Because they can't handle a car. They don't understand how dangerous a car is, but yet when 16, 17 year old um, years later, then they understand what they got. Because usually when you get the big too fast, you don't understand how to drive it. Because there was a time in my life when I got uh, an amount of money too fast and I wanted to start um, a movie company, but I didn't know how to, how, to, uh, how to manage it. I didn't know anything about writing, uh, commissioning uh, a script. I didn't know anything about... Um, hiring a writer to do a script. I didn't know anything. I took advice from somebody that I didn't know. And I just, you know, I, it just wasn't good. So anyway, I, I wish I had, I had started small, done my research, done my learning, done everything and then I wouldn't have gotten into the mess that I had but going through all that and going through what I've gone through since has taught me a lot about 
about hiring a writer, finding the right script, doing my due diligence, and all of that stuff. It taught me a lot. It helped me cut my teeth on it. Um, I was listening to something uh, in the middle of the night, um, a 2020 podcast, and I was listening to something called The Housewife and the Hustler, and about how these how these uh, rich people, uh, she was on Desperate Housewives, um, uh, Hollywood or something, and he was a big, a big lawyer that helped in the Aaron Brockovich case, and these people had so much money, it was lavish, and when you have uh so much money without cutting cutting your teeth on it first, you kind of will do anything to keep it because you don't you don't know or you don't want to live without it, so that's what happens. When you are, when you, when you get things too quickly and don't cut your teeth on it, that's because, um, you will almost do anything to keep, to keep it. And this, uh, the lawyer, not so much the wife, but the lawyer ended up stealing uh, the money of his clients because he just he just uh, was used to a certain lifestyle and he uh, didn't want to do it um, fairly. It was ill-gotten gains. And and when you when you don't start with the small and get the big too quickly, you don't know how to manage it. When my channel went from one eighty something to to two twenty seven subscribers, thank you for all to all my subscribers, by the way, I really appreciate it, um, I, it was a different level of managing it, and as my channel grows, I need, I need different skills to manage it, and, because a lot of people are, are saying, Subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. But they don't know how to manage um, a subscription. Uh, they don't manage, they don't know how to manage the subscribers they got. They want subscribers, but they don't know how to um, manage the subscribers that they have. It's a lot of work um, being, I wouldn't call myself a professional YouTuber, but I'm just letting God um, in, increase me slowly so that I get, I get it little by little. And I'm grateful for every subscriber. But I'm grateful for the speed that God is going with me because he's, um, he's having me cut my teeth on it slowly so that when I get to the level of, of, subscri of subscribers and when my business gets going and when all of that starts happening and when I 
start working with who I'm going to work with. When the Lord opens that doors, I would know how to deal with it because he, he'll say, remember when I told you about this? Now this is what, where you put it in the, to practice because in the small, he gives me tips on how to hang, handle the big because I, I'm listening to his Holy Spirit. He says, now when this gets bigger, you will do this. And he gives me pictures on how to handle this when it gets bigger. Whereas if I got like a million subscribers all at once, I would be so stressed out and not know how to handle it. And that's why a lot of YouTubers um, get stressed out because the more people you have um, following you, whether it be on a business or whatever, is the more people you have to manage. And managing people in a business or ministry or whatever takes strategy. Um, and it takes wisdom, takes the know-how to do it. And a lot of people that got fame quickly and didn't know how to manage it, they, <coughs> they, 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 they fell because they didn't know how to manage it. And and don't look at the small as a bad thing. Look at it as a training ground for the big. Because when you're small, when you're small, you can make mistakes. You can get messy without the world criticizing you. But when you get bigger. Everybody wants the fame and the fortune, but with that comes a lot of responsibility and a lot of expectations. And if the Lord increases you slowly, he has time to teach you. He has time to guide you to the resources to say, when this gets bigger, you'll do this and whatever. And that's where he has me now. I'm in training. I'm learning it. And it is so amazing. And he's like, don't wait to bring this big thing. You don't need to be big to bring to 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 bring it. He's saying right now, bring something. Whatever talent you have, bring something. Start with whatever you need to start with. Whether you start showing your designs just to people in your neighborhood or whatever, bring something. He's saying it doesn't need to be much. Just bring something. Whatever you have, whatever resources you have, it may not be to the level that you want it. But at least it's something. He's saying bring something. Bring what you have. It kind of reminds me of the woman with the jars of oil where she said in the Bible where she said to the prophet, um, I just have one jar of oil and then my son and I will die because I have, I have nothing to feed him and myself. And the prophet said, go collect these jars and come back. So she went to the neighborhood and collected those jars. And then when she collected those jars, the oil was overflowing and the and the uh 
two fishes and five loaves with the little boy's lunch when Jesus blessed it, it was just overflowing. And the widow with the two mites, and she said, all I have is this little bit of money, so, but I'm going to give it. Jesus appreciates little. God appreciates little because it shows your faithfulness. It shows your willingness. And do not be afraid to put in the work when it comes to the little. Um, do you, you know how much prayer and stuff go into my sermons? A lot. And sometimes uh, I look up uh, definitions and it it takes a lot of um, listening to the Spirit, listening to the Lord, uh, looking around me, um, hearing my Spirit speak. Because I have to, I have to say to to the Lord, "What are you saying to me?" And He gives me the title because of that. And that takes a lot of sacrifice and a lot of work um, to, to, to do. And I used to think that, that my sermons didn't take work because I, I didn't spend a long time in the scriptures. And the Lord brought all this to my attention, all the prayer, and all the spirit work, and all the personal work that I do uh, to put these sermons together. Because each sermon that I, that I preach, um, it, it has a lot of my own personal lessons and what God has shown me and what God is doing in me and what God is um, shaping in me. So basically, it's not just, oh, let me just um, pick something up. That would be a good thing to talk about. No, no, no. It's most of my sermons now are things that I've gone through, things that I've struggled with, things that I'm learning. So I pull from me what God has told me. <laughs> um, I like to say, say this, I go down to hell so that you guys don't have to. in my own life like what i'm teaching you is most times what god has shown me it's not like oh jesus that's a good idea i should talk about that or that's a good idea i should talk about that it's it's most of the time it's things from my own life that i've learned my own mistakes, my own neuroses, my own kind of deal, my own kind of walk with the Lord, my own kind of walk with in this game called life and the pitfalls that I have found and whatever I've gone through. So, because if I can, if I can say to people, don't go there, or yes, do this, or yes, do that. I've done my job, and if I can say what the Lord has called me to say on a given Sunday or on any given day, 
that's that's what what I do this for. And it's so awesome when I get comments or when I get even two two or three people watching because because it it lets me know that that people are are watching and I'm hoping that people are receiving in a positive way what God has shown me and that brings me such great joy uh, because coming to the pulpit for me was not a joyous experience. It started with a very painful experience, actually, and it and it has blossomed into people's lives being touched and uh, people being hopefully helped and healed and restored. And I'm so grateful for all of you. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you can't bring everything, bring something. If you can't bring everything, bring something. So if you have to start little, start little. Like, if you have to, you know, go to school, go to school. If you have to read books, read books. Um, the training time is, al- is also to get education so and to gather intel. So if you have to read books, read books. Do whatever you have to do, because in this little time, he's trying to t- train you. He's trying to teach you, and he will use sometimes formal school to teach you, and sometimes he will use uh, resources to teach you, podcasts to teach you. There's so much, many things out there to learn. And sometimes he'll bring mentor, mentees to teach you. Sometimes he'll let you know what you need to work on through therapy or or through just time with him. He'll let you get uh, some of the kinks, kinks of your life so that when you get to where you're going, all people see is him and his glory. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you. Um, take care. Bye. It doesn't have to be everything, but bring something. It doesn't have to be everything, but bring something. It doesn't have to be everything, but bring something. Bring something. You don't have to sit on the couch and wait till I have to wait till I can get this. I have to wait till I can get that. No. While I'm waiting for this thing to come through, I'm still preaching. I'm still encouraging. I'm still coming on uh, through the week and on Sundays telling you what saith the Lord. I'm not sitting at, at home going, oh my God, I can't do anything while I'm waiting for this big thing. The Lord will ask you, what can you do now? What have I put around you? What resources have I given to you? What people have I given have I have I given to you that can help you with your endeavor? 
there are people around you that he has placed in your life who can help you with your endeavor. You have, you just have to ask him who. And sometimes it's not people. Sometimes it's resources. Sometimes it's friendships. What has he placed in your life now that you can use for his glory? Because he, he's placed you where he's placed you for a reason. And the question that that um, needs to be asked is, Lord, what oh, what reason have you placed me here? What lessons do I need to learn at this place? Because I've asked those myself, and it's so brilliant what he's taught me. It's so amazing and awesome. And he'll, those who have an ear, let him hear what my spirit is saying. Those who have an ear, let him hear what my spirit is saying. saying God, we are listening to your spirit. We are available. We are open, teach us, develop us, destroy anything that is not like you in this training season. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you can't bring everything, bring something. If you can't bring everything, bring something. Because he'll take the something that you bring and and turn it into something he can use for his glory. If you can't bring everything, bring something. Break us open today, God. Teach us, God. Develop us, God, in this season of training. Show us the lessons that we need to learn. Show us where we've fallen. Show us, God, what you want from us, what you want for us, what you want to work through us. In the name of Jesus, we are your instruments of praise, God. We are your instruments of worship. We are your instruments of healing. God, use us for that. Use us as instruments for your glory, Lord God. And burn out everything in us that is not like you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Show us where you want us to be. If we're not in the right place, Show us where you want us to be and teach us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Show us your power. Break us open with blessings, oh God. You see we're working hard, Lord God. Just break us open. With your blessings, O oh God. Break us open with your love. Dig out everything that is not like you. So only your glory is left, O oh God. We don't want any of the glory for ourselves because if we take it on ourselves, we're going to have to keep it ourselves. And that is too much for a human being to keep. God, you take the glory. You take the glory. We are just vessels, instruments for you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
Okay, guys. He will use you as an instrument of healing. He wants to use you as an instrument of healing to him. Be available to be used as an instrument of healing. Don't, don't tell him what he can use you for and what he can't use you for. Be available for whatever instrument he wants to use you. And he wants to you to be an instrument of healing, an instrument of restoration for your families, for your friends, for your neighbors. You're interested in the world. He's interested in those around you. Who in, who in your life around you needs healing, needs restoration, needs encouragement? We are just so focused on the world that we don't even notice that our world our family, our friends, our loved ones are falling apart. Start there. Be an instrument of healing there. In the name of Jesus. Remove any blockage, God. If we're not healing you because of anger, remove that blockage, God. Whatever we're not doing, remove the blockage. Unstop our ears so we can hear you clearly, Lord. You know, we'll share about shit. We'll share about we'll share about we'll share about in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remove everything around us that is not like us. Remove every person from our lives that you don't want in our lives. And teach us how to let those harmful people go. Although those harmful people may be our family members, they may be our co-workers. Teach us the proper distances that we need to have it when it comes to certain people. We don't need to be close to everybody. Sometimes there are people that we need to um, cut out of our lives or put certain distances in our lives. Are those people growing you or are they shrinking you? Are their words encouraging you? Are their words a bevy of discouragement? If you know, if you know that God has told you something, but your best friend you've had for 20 years is saying, that's so stupid. Maybe it's time to reevaluate that friendship. Sometimes relationships are hard to let go, but it is often necessary because those people are holding us back. Now, I'm not saying to not accept wise counsel. If if someone is telling you that this is a good idea, but they're challenging you about the finances for this thing or whatever. Don't just say, you're trying to hold me back. Um, I pray in this season that you dis- discern wise counsel from uh, those people who, who are discouraged or shrinkers. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
because we all need wise counsel and constructive criticism. But we don't need people that shrink our dreams. And I pray in this season that you will discern the difference. If you don't have everything, bring something. Okay, guys, I'm really seeing you later. Bye.